Hello Math 133 students. In this video I'm going to be going over the hypothesis test guide which is the new flow chart for chapter 10. So in chapter 10 of course our, our big instructions are going to be we're going to conduct a hypothesis test or test this value that kind of thing. So if you see the word test in there that's kind of a sign. Alright so for us there's only two options. We'll either be testing the proportion or we testing the mean. Everything we do is, is proportions or means. So if it's proportions, you're going to look for the word proportion somewhere in the problem, which of course almost always hides as a percent, so you'll see a percents in the problem. They'll often talk about surveys and polls. Um, a poll is another way of talking about a survey. We polled this many readers, that kind of thing. All right, now the test statistic formula is rather complicated. It's Z0, which is P hat minus P0 over big square root P0, 1 minus P0, all over N. And that big square root extends all that way down. Oh, but the important part is that their parameter is P. Now this part, you don't have to worry about it so much because it's step three on what page? So in your gold packet right here, there's that formula. That's the test statistic. And it's on page 301. So page 301. And we learned about this in section 10.2. So 10.2, page 301. One other thing to note about these ones is the requirement for normal is actually a little bit different um, even than we've normally had. So when we had confidence intervals, we would put n times p hat times 1 minus p hat. But for a single proportion test, z test, we will use p0, the null hypothesis assumed value of the population proportion. So your for requirement for normal is n times p0 times 1 minus p0 is greater than or equal to 10. And again, that's not p hat, that's p0 right there, the null hypothesis value. All right, so these are proportions, right? Proportions. Down here will be means, right? So mean will be here. All right, well, for a mean, you're going to look at, I mean, if they say a mean, that's a sign, or standard deviation. Another big clue is if you have a table of data. So if they give you a data table, that's a big sign that this is the one you're doing. Data tables don't work for proportions because proportions are really about qualitative data that you've turned into a percent. So quantitative data can be given in a table. And then you'll also see the word average thrown around. Sometimes they won't say mean, they'll say average instead, which for our purposes will be a mean, even though we as good stat students know that that is not always the case. And an average actually could be median or mode or one of many other values. Now the test statistic formula, which is in step three, is T0, which is X bar minus mu zero over the standard error, which is S over the square root of N. So this is step three on page 302 this time. Let me open my gold packet, although mine's not really gold. <laughs> so it's right here, page 302, right there. It's a t-test, and you can see there's your test statistic right there. t0, which is x bar minus mu zero over s over the square root of n. That's your formula for step three. This was section 10.3 that we learned this, as opposed to 10.2, which was for proportions. Now the requirement for normal is a little bit, oh, before I go there, the parameter, of course. So just like p hat is gauging where p should be, right? So we're, we're judging our p hat based off of what we assume the p value is, um, sorry, the proportion value is, p value is a different thing. So we, we compare p hat, which is a sample proportion, to p zero, which is the assumed population proportion. Down here, we compare x bar to mu zero. Mu zero is the assumed value of our population parameter, which is mu. This is the population mean, right? And this one up here is the population proportion. Right. And we assume they're the p0 value, or we assume they're the mu0 value, unless we can prove it otherwise. Now the requirement for normal is a bit involved here. 
So you need your distribution to be normal and it can be given to you in several ways. So one is it can just be given. That means it's literally written in the instructions for the problem. Or you could have a graph. Um, normally it's a, prob a normal probability plot. Um, normally. <laughs> However, it could be a histogram, it could be a dot plot, you could have all sorts of graphs. So a graph of some kind, but almost always a normal probability plot. Or n is greater than or equal to 30. You're all supposed to have no outliers, but that's true if, if it's normal anyway. So that's kind of a given. So we would say it's given or a graph or n is greater than or equal to 30. All right, now there's a whole bunch of things to remember here. Um, a lot of them from section 10.1, to be perfectly honest. So um, other key words that cue that it's a hypothesis test. You'll see the word significance thrown around. Significance is a sign that you're talking about a test of significance, i.e. a hypothesis test. You'll see, can you conclude that, 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 that. Well, conclusion implies that you've run a test. So you're going to have to run that test to see if you can conclude that you should reject H0 or not. All right, what are some other things? Well, type 1 and type 2 error. Remember, the probability of a type 1 error is alpha, and the probability of a type 2 error is beta, lowercase b in the Greek language. So this is the probability of a false negative in a screening test, right? In medicine in particular, um, but I'll just say a screening test. Right? And then this is the probability of a false positive in a screening test. So alpha is the probability that um, if I was, for example, that it tells you that you have the disease when you don't, that it tells you that you're pregnant when you're not. Beta is the probability that it does, it tells you, nope, you're fine, no disease here, and you actually have it. Or, nope, you're not pregnant, and you actually are. That's beta. So it's the probability of making that mistake, I should say. So notice that P there. It's the probability of making that, that error. And of course, there's a relationship between the two. If um, alpha goes up, I'll just have to, do this in a different color, then beta would go down. If you're really worried about false positives, then you're going to end up making more false negatives, and vice versa, and vice versa. They're on a teeter-totter together. Oops, sometimes I spell the word vice versa wrong. Vice versa, right? Which means, um, here, I can draw it in pink. If alpha goes down, beta would go up, right? So if alpha goes down, beta goes up. If alpha goes up, beta goes down. They, they're on a teeter-totter together. They're, it's called an inverse or indirect relationship. Now, a couple other things. Something else we've learned along the way is that statistical significance and practical significance are not the same thing. Statistical significance means you get to reject H0. Right? Reject H not, and we do that when our p-value is less than alpha, our level of significance, our chance of making this false positive. Practical significance is a judgment call <laughs> based on the context of the situation. You have to compare, um, you compare your um, X bar or P hat to uh, the mu zero and then to the P zero and see, you know, hey, was this a big change or not? Did it seem like they were different or not? That's a different question than whether I reject H not. That's more a judgment call based on this, you, you know, even when it was only 2%, oh, this is saving, you know, puppies lives. So therefore that 2% matters or, hey, it was only 2%. That's no big deal for this test. So it just depends. So you're making a judgment call on these two comparisons. So you'll either compare this one if it's means or this one if it's proportions. And last but not least, of course, the p-value. One of the most important things. What is a p-value? Well, a p-value is the probability of a fluke. It's the probability of your sample statistic, your sample results, 
sample statistic, of course, would be either p hat or x bar. Um, by random chance, if your h naught was true. Right? So it's the probability of getting what you got. It's the probability of getting that p hat if your h naught was true, or getting that x bar if h naught was true. What are the chances by random fluke that you got that, that those values? And remember, when the p-value is low, we reject the null hypothesis. And we always want our p-values to be low. The lower, the better. Right? Because when it's lower, you're going to get to reject H0 for more values of alpha.